We are building a religion. We are building it bigger. We are widening the corridors and adding more lanes. We are building a religion, a limited edition. We are now accepting callers for these pendant keychains. To use to resist it is useless. It is useless to resist it. The cigarette is burning, but he never seems to ash here on Blockchain Basement. We are the bread and butter of all the information that's been swimming across the internet for crypto news. If you're going to um, screw me, at least pull my hair. Yeah. Hell yeah. What do you got? Oh, oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, they could start chopping off fingers. They're yeah. like, give me your seed phrase, but that's, yeah. I don't know it. Over two years, he's made like 17K on I'm Roblox. You. What? Like 12. You yeah. never listen to me. We must be married. Yeah, well, how much are you investing? $100. Four to 600000 The think generational so signals are now. Do you now. You're spread so thin, that's how you get in on Snake. Snake's been okay. my biggest winner. Welcome everybody to Blockchain Basement. <laughs> 50 Caspa to the person in chat who can name the song and the band uh, that I just quoted. Not so bad. you have to name the song too. And I can't just be the band. Mm. So yeah, mm. guys, this is going to be, this is an interesting episode of Blockchain Basement because if you're coming here, oh, all right, is. C90, bro, she DM me, man. You're, you, just got, you just won 50 Caspa. That's basically $50,000 I just gave away. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so yeah, you just won fifty Caspa. Um, That's a nice job. <laughs> yeah, nice Comfort job. Eagle. Gosh, yeah. one of the thickest, sickest, yeah. most disrespectful bass lines in all of alternative rock mm. is Comfort Eagle by Cake. If you haven't listened to it, you have to go Cake. and let's do it right now. Um, guys, this is going to be a great day. We have I have done deep research. This may be the first in a series of lessons on why the dollar is going not to zero, but less than zero. Mm. More on that in a moment, because I've got a lot to share. But before we get there, I'm gonna shout out to chat. Robert Young, Dusto, Sin Diesel, Nicole Minis Tater, Maria Gattanese, C90 FTW, Triple C, Shake and Bake, RC Rex, Granny's Garden, haven't seen you here in a minute. Hey. Good to see you again. Love you. Novo, Married AF, Big Daddy, DOD Slave, Don Wu. Balls deep in dog with hat he is. There he is. And dog Patrick Leishman. Well, welcome to Blockchain Basement. Hit the like button on your way in. Mm. Folks, we've got um we got a full house today. We even have the side table up with, with Timbo. We have mystery man himself. Watch, you're going to see the cord in the shot too, I bet you. Look at Tim. Wow. What's up, everybody? He's Damn. he's a diva. He needs his own table. He can't sit next to Drew. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm allergic to he's, Drew. He's going to be showing transition. us. He just can't keep his hands off of Drew. Yeah. He's going to be showing us all yeah. the TA on Blowfin. Mm -hmm. uh, Hannah, welcome. How are you feeling, Hannah? Feeling good. Feeling great. Got some orange juice. Mm. Orange mm. juice. Yeah, I've got um, PBR. What you yeah. got, Drew? What are the goodies? Um, Space Dust IPA. Space Dust yeah. IPA. Oh, okay. Space Dust because we're going to the moon. Space yep. Dust. Am we're right? going to need it. Hmm. Uh, Owen's, on the, Owen's on the keys. Welcome, Owen. Yeah, is he muck banging? Uh, and he's not muck. Is he muck banging? Oh, oh, he's got. He's got bit. straight he is up. Bit. Ooh, that's a nice. Coke he's he's just drinking that Coke raw. Yeah, raw Coca Cola. Put the Coke straight yeah, to the liver. Speaking of straight to the liver, hang on, I got a top up. Um, top up, guys. We've got a present. Do we have present camera? Yeah, is, do we have the present shot? Present cam, present cam. We got a present. All right, here we go. So this is a live <laughs> unveiling. I don't know who this is from. But it came in mm. to the mailbox, which the P.O. box is 193. It's not 192. Uh, oh, wait. Is there something else in here? Whoa. Okay. Oops. I hit the mic. <laughs> this from. Um. Oh. Was it? 
This is a gift from Nicole Minnis Tater. Stop. Hey. Two DZ, your bow tie and suspenders. Merry Christmas from Shake and Bake and Nicole Minnis Tater. This is for DZ. We're going to open DZ's present. Oh, no. <laughs> That'll teach him. <laughs> yeah, you can't really see it right now anyway. That's fine. <laughs> DZ, yeah, DZ's blind at the moment. Yeah. Look at these. He would oh be able to my it. goodness. Holy cow. Mm. Yeah. Hello? Look at that. This is. That's oh, righteous. that's adorable. These are. This is Nicole. Larry King, guys, and cufflinks. Oh my goodness. Oh, they and went all cufflinks. out. Oh my god, that's adorable. This is intense. Oh, that's I think good this stuff. This is a pocket scarf mm. um, a for a tie. DZ's gonna love that. These are incredible. That's adorable. Incredible. I love it. Listen, That's we fantastic. he has to come wearing like an all white button down with a collar and then put the that on. The 20s are back. Yeah. It's so cute. Yes. Thank you guys. That's that so is beautiful. very, very kind. <laughs> They're always giving us presents. We yeah. appreciate it. We have it. the best community on the For real. We do. Best. This show is yeah. the best show in all of crypto. Hands down. Yeah. We have Hands the best down. fans. We have the best everything. Um, gosh, what are we going to get into? Crypto oh, markets. There's so much. Kind of going cray cray, and they will continue to do so. Uh, we're back up above 70s. We're in the 70s for the fear and greed index. There is no fear yeah. anymore. It's all greed. Um, and I think this is going to be a continuing pattern. <laughs> Tim, get ready to pull up your charts. Yeah. Let's... You, you let me know when you're ready. Before we get into the Tim's realistic and fun charts, uh, we're going to look at this ridiculous and stupid chart. <laughs> this is the best. <laughs> Um, is it really that stupid though? It is really, really dumb. Is that like you know why? Fifty-seven hundred percent or something in the last ninety yeah, days? Like stupid amounts. Okay, so what is this? This is the four. Hour. Okay, guys, we can, we can calm down with the four hour on bonk. I mean, Hannah was fifty eight about X. this thing before that gigantic green candles. So you have that. Yeah. So oh, I hate myself. Yes. Okay. Why? You're For not no buying. Why. I'm nope. telling people, but yeah. I'm not buying. It's okay. You can't get. <laughs> it's I fine. Run into it's that fine. Problem all the time, Hannah. You yeah. can't get in on every single project or see, but as long as we're given the right calls yeah i knew Shout i know one of the bonk. guys who like started bonk do you really yeah okay his name is uh, should i should i even say his name uh probably not probably not okay i know make one of the guys. a good name I, though i was on Give a, him a good name it is a good name I, I i was on a phone call with him outside of a uh pad thai restaurant mm. in april of this year mm -hmm. he was telling me about bonk he's like dude bonk's the future and then bonk pumped up and then came down and then did nothing for mm. forever and this guy had a huge bag of bonk. And he held like, all the way through? 10K plus. I'm pretty sure he did. Wow. And now here we are. Here oh, we yeah. are with bonk now. And yeah. I remember when bonk, right now it has a $1 billion market cap. That's insane. <laughs> I remember I was considering getting in on bonk when it was at a $200,000 market cap. Yeah. yeah. I know. I know. So I mean, this guy is about as rich as Vitalik now. Yeah, 80x actually, year to date, 80x. I love 80X it. 80x up. You love bonk. to see it. <laughs> Somebody for says bonk. it sounds like Justin Williams. I'm it's, starting the rumor. <laughs> it's, oh my God. I can tell you now. I'm starting the rumor. <laughs> Justin's <laughs> rich off bonk. Yeah, oh my God. <laughs> all right, Tim, show us some good charts. All right, some yeah. good charts. Well, we'll start with the goodest of all the charts. Okay. Uh, mm. That is Bitcoin chart. Uh, mm. King of crypto. You know, Drew and I have been talking about this the last couple of days. I think he showed you guys. Uh, I, he cried on my shoulder this morning. I did. For not yeah. acting. Activating and getting in on it. Oh, no, that was yesterday morning. Well, well yesterday you were, morning. yeah, you cried both mornings. Both mornings. Yeah. <laughs> Today had more tears, I feel like. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, perfect bounce here on Bitcoin, guys. Off of a former resistance level, we found some support right here. I also told him this morning, as we were pumping in price, I said, watch us bounce back up to 43 and then come back down. Well, that's yeah. pretty much exactly if I were to come down here the last couple hours. That's exactly what we did. After that little flash crash <laughs> here at 8 a.m. this morning, uh, we came back down. And then uh, we went a little higher than I thought. Uh, I do think we're going to be moving a little bit more to the downside, though. I'm not necessarily telling you guys to enter a short here because uh, there's not going to be that much that you can do with it. But one of the reasons why I'm pretty sure we're going to be having some uh, – some, I predicted the rally and then the crash. This chart right here, high, uh, high block capital using the liquidations chart. You guys can see this morning we had a lot of liquidity sitting up above us here at 43. We pumped up. We filled uh, some of that liquidity. Those were short liquidations. So a lot of people were shorting Bitcoin, got a little mm -hmm. wrecked. There is further stuff above us sitting mainly at 44. And it kind of, the if we can get up to 45, you see it go blank right there. It, you could stop right there or you could see volume kind of push through. But, uh, but I do think 
We're going to make a move slightly back to the downside, coming back potentially down here, filling this below 42. Uh, I'm not sure if we're going to hit 41. One of the reasons why is because I love using this one over here as well on coin glass. You guys can see here, nice, I fat, like coin glass yellow lot, grouping yeah. of liquidity sitting right here at 41.7. Uh, then when you go back to the chart, because this you, you, you always take a look at those liquidity levels. You then come back over the chart saying, hey, where's the support? Where's the resistance? What's the oscillator saying? This is the hourly chart. We got a nice little buy signal on that flash. That's part of the reasons why we went to the upside. Uh, but now you guys can see we're kind of hovering in that middle zone with our oscillators getting really ugly. I don't know why that <laughs> oscillator is not working, but it's not. Uh, I think that we're going to have a little bit of a dip. You guys can even see it. There's things like Cardano. Dipping today, even though we've seen a lot of pumps in the space. Cardano, of course, one of the, the heavier hitters last uh, couple of days over the last week. But it's coming down. I think we're going to see mm. a potential below 60% Cardano again. So you guys looking to make a purchase maybe around 59 cents. Okay. Could be very for interesting for Cardano. See, we're getting lower here on the mm. hourly oscillator, but we have a little bit further. We could continue to go to the downside. Mm. Uh, so that's what I'm seeing there. What was the, There was one pump in... Earlier, well, I kinda, I'm curious what your thoughts are on Link right now too. Ooh. We should look at Link. It's we should take a look at Link because this fifteen dollar level is super important for it to hold. I, I do need to know. call out real quick. Crimson, Crimson Caravan Company putting the CSI Miami meme into the chat. Yeah, what? would you say it's gone bonkers? And then he did the sunglasses <laughs> emoji, and then the screaming yeah from the beginning of CSI Miami. <laughs> How Absolute did you catch that? Gold. Oh my <laughs> Absolute God. gold from Kim's and Caravan Company. Go ahead, Drew, I'm sorry. No, I mean, for me, like last cycle, Chainlink was an early performer. Um, yeah. Kind of the canary in the coal mine type chart is what I remembered it as. And that was a lot of the reasoning why I hammered into it once I uninsulated from, like I tethered up when Bitcoin lost 31, went down to 25. Waited for that last pulse, then got in. But now I'm looking at that shelf at 15 is yep. pretty damn important. Like we've dropped in the 1450 range. Yep. Haven't broken it yet. But I mean, do you think that it's going to hold this stair step that it's built? Yeah, this is interesting. So we had a little bit of an ascending triangle that the, it gave us a little bit of a flirt right here that might break up and go up towards Ooh. $18. Uh, did not happen. Little teeny. Topped out right here mm -hmm. about 1726. Mm -hmm. Came mm -hmm. back down. Here's the good thing, though. So that's where I had that, that dotted white line. We broke that we turned it it looks like right now we're kind of utilizing it as resistance along with that uh the, that flat level resistance even though we've had some levels come above and below it 1536 very consistent zone of resistance and support uh what i'm looking at though like you said shelf we, we still are technically here's here's the crazy thing we're still setting higher highs and higher lows i don't think it is time for, for the market to take big dips. I think we're going to see some little ones come here and there still, but uh, with Bitcoin still kind of eyeing about 48K, there's still a lot of heavy liquidity that could send mm. us up to about 48K. And, you know, of course, when you get that area, 50K becomes uh, a question mark. Um, Huge but resistance of 50K. Yes, there's going to be a lot, a lot of resistance. Uh, but when it comes to Chainlink, we're still setting the higher highs, higher lows, Drew. When I pull up our oscillators here, yeah, the daily chart's starting to come down. I like to, I like to take a look more at the hourly look and down with. to kind of get a good understanding of what's happening. You're seeing oscillators be a little more overextended. There we go here. Uh, one of the oscillators I use printing overbought with red reversal at one of these peaks with bearish divergence now coming in. Yeah. Uh, so you don't love to see it. When we come over to liquidity blocks, let's go ahead and take a look at link. And see where we have some heavy BJ's liquidity in coming in. After yeah, Link, we're going to look at Dog with Hat. No, we're not yes. going to. Look at this. Guys, we got a lot of show to get through <laughs> no, today. Right, we got a lot of show. All right. right, 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 right. Look, look, look at Link. We got to move on. Yeah, yeah. Look at this to the almost the pinpoint. We wow. took out all of that big liquidity. Now take a look what's down below us. Yeah, there's a good amount right here. Could we make a move potentially as low down here into the 14? Yep. Point five. If, if if the bears really gain pick up some momentum, maybe we're getting down below that closer to fourteen. Let's take a look on the chart, and then we're gonna move on from charts. And I know we got a lot else to talk about. Uh, let's take a look at fixed range volume in that same in this area where price has kind of been hesitating mm. uh, again, because fourteen five is gonna look at that. 14.6 is our point of control. Okay. Uh, very interesting spot to potentially see a pullback. It, like I said, it could go lower, could get closer towards Golly. 14, but that point of control is going to more than likely be a stickler point when we start pulling back. Again, I, I see a lot of stuff coming back. I think Bitcoin's pulling back, Cardano's pulling back, Solana's pulling back, Link's pulling back. There was something pumping that I don't know if it's going to pull back all the way, but I can't remember what it was. So <laughs> Was it Cosmos? It, you know what it might have been? I think it's Tia. Tia. Oh, yeah. Tia. Oh, yeah. Tia well, here just, we go. Ugh. Yeah. 
just breaking everything that's uh, resistance. Owen, if the name has resistance in it, it's being broken it's by Tia. It's being broken, yeah. yeah. Um, it is Borg. There is, the resistance is futile when it comes to Tia. Yeah. Oh, and can you put in the chat, I am doing the home loan. I am going to YOLO You're it. You're moving oh. in on it. I am going to YOLO it into crypto. Okay. Um, chat will decide the fate of this YOLO. Oh, really? Is it going to go into Bitcoin, Ethereum, AVAX, or Tia? Chat. Wow. My literal financial well-being is <laughs> in your hands. Uh, yeah, but go back to the Tia chart uh, when you get a Gosh. Because it's just absolutely going nuts. Yeah, Tia's, Tia's going nuts. Uh, yeah, there's another thing. That, this is the sign of real bullish momentum. Yep. Look at so all these flash. I like to call these Christmas tree Oof, ornaments. Gosh. Look at when they pop up and look what price does. That's when those pop up. Price is supposed to stop mm. and and yeah. go to the downside. <laughs> it ignored every single one of them. <laughs> uh, that to me is how strong of a bull case Tia has. Is that it looks at these rejection points and says, nah, "You can take that back to the bank. We'll keep going yeah. to the upside." <laughs> Uh, yeah. it, there, Cute signal. Bye. The, the <laughs> clock will strike midnight. There will be midnight. Cinderella will mm -hmm. uh, lose her shoes, and the the carriage will turn back into a pumpkin. But mm. I don't know if it's midnight yet. It might just yeah. be eleven. Wow, I love it. Wow, I I I, I kind of <laughs> was in a spaces the other night with some uh, Tia um, maxis. Yeah, they didn't work for Tia, but they got big bags. I've been looking at Tia ever since like June or May of this year. And I, I've got, they were calling, they were saying buying Tia now is like buying Ethereum at 80 bucks. So I've got insane Tia FOMO. Um, by the way, uh, BJ, if you're still in the chat, like let's get Jack on the show. Invite Jack to come hang out on the couch because we, I would love to talk to him about all his Solana degeneracy. Oh, yeah. Because um, yeah, things are happening on Solana and then all that stuff that's happening on Solana is soon going to happen on AVAX. So just hold on to your butts. But guys, in case you have any, question if the bull run is back the lord himself mm. sent a sign from heaven today mm. he's almost got it a bull is loose at penn station <laughs> there was an actual bull on the train tracks at penn station <laughs> he did not have an mta card oh, but that's fine sick. we are we back? running all around Look an actual that. live bull wow where is this in Penn Station? In New Jersey. He's oh going in Manhattan. Lord. He was like, Kathy Hochul, take a congestion charge and shove it up your ass. <laughs> he was like, what are y'all looking at? looking for some fun. Amazing. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, amazing. He's so cute. Um, What's next here? Yeah, Ledger. Okay. We're going to get into this more on Friday just because we've got so much to talk about today. We really do. But Ledger, Ledger's done. I, I, I commented on um, a post from Ryan Sean Adams. He's like, yeah, like we're, this is a problem for the industry, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, look, we as a crypto industry need to move on from Ledger. Yeah. They are not good players. They're not to be trusted. They continuously screw up time and time again and put marketing over their security. So I knew something was wrong when they had their really dumb ledger wallet thing. Do you remember that, Drew? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was the, they sharded our seed phrases for a, Program you had to opt in for and you had to pay for, but still. No, 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 no. You're you're on the right track. I'm talking about. Do you remember when Ledger had it was a bracelet and you had you put your Ledger on your bracelet? Oh, like God, it was an actual yeah. fashion item. Why yeah, would you do that? Not a good. Thing. It's the not antithesis of crypto in every single way. It's dumb. Mm. Ledger, you're toast. You're done in this industry. I'm They're sorry. They're on the ledge. Dust dust. On the ledge. I was um, saying right before this started, I told my roommate about Ledger last night, and I was like, she was like, "Is it safe to keep your crypto on Coinbase?" And I was like. Actually, no, she asked if it was safe to attach your bank information to Coinbase. And I was like, yeah, Coinbase is a public company. Like, I oh. use it. Everybody uses it. But most people, like, would say, don't keep your crypto on an exchange. And I don't even want to go into it because she's, like, buying her first crypto. But I was like, "Yeah, you can get a ledger. Like, they're sold at Best Buy. Like, they're yeah. trusted. But they I'm are. like, Ruh -ruh. everything that I tell her, I'm like, mm, do your own research. At but this... then I come to work today, and that's this is what happened. Like, yeah. the day after I told somebody about it. Well, I, if there's a normie that you're trying to onboard into crypto right now, it's Arculus. Just well, yeah. If if you're not a normie, um, and you want to have a safe wallet, get an Arculus. But if you are trying to onboard a normie and they're looking at Coinbase, look, man, right now Coinbase is safer than Ledger. Yeah, you know Coinbase I know this? is safe. Yeah, <laughs> you know I know this because Coinbase is the official custodian of the entire BlackRock iShares ETF. Yeah, so yeah. they are space grade. Alien technology is now at Coinbase to protect your crypto. <laughs> Okay. How, how long? How long do you think before? 
and maybe it has. I don't know. I, I guess I haven't paid attention to the details. Uh, is Binance still number one exchange with the most? Yeah. The, most how long until Coinbase passes it? Never. You don't think Coinbase will pass it? I don't think it'll ever pass it because Binance is the slush money, gray money account for all of Asia. Yeah, I just, mm. I wonder with some, I don't think Binance is going to go away by any means, no. but I just wonder if things are going to kind of navigate away from it. But interesting. Oh, God. Mm-hmm. Also, by the way, I had an answer for you. I was looking at the stuff. I, I have an official answer for what you should uh, be investing in. Oh, okay. Yeah. With, with your options, I don't know much about Tia. So Tia could okay. be a, you know, crazy. Okay. There's a very re- realistic chance that we could see Link do something like uh, a 40X from yeah. right now. 40X. Versus only about a 26X for AVAX. So mathematically. What about for Tia? Yeah, Tia, there's nothing. I mean, because it's so brand new. That you, know, you don't know. You, you don't know what you so, don't know. So I could potentially 1,000X this $20,000. On Link? Potentially. But Link, Link Dude, for sure. Oh I, God, I, watch is... Link. Watch Link go <laughs> yeah. explosive. Yeah. Like, uh, again, I, Drew thought he was the most bullish person on Link in the company. Oh, man. I mean, yeah. there, I, there's even whispers of Link and Solana ETFs getting thrown in the mix over the years. Like, Think about if we head into 2025 and they're working, even just trying to work on ETFs for those projects. That's yeah. going to be insane. That's the situation where we could see $500,000 tokens. You know, so yeah. starting to realize that it does look like we're getting the spot ETF. I've been uh, fuddish on getting one in the past. It looks like they're coming. So now I'm having to soak into the realization that we're probably at good chance to break the diminishing returns pattern in the past, you know. Um, I had to stick to that assumption that we were going to get diminished returns and top out somewhere around four or five trillion. Now, man, I mean, we can accomplish seven trillion between everything over the next few years with where. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, oh, we're, so we're going to get into that, bro. You're, yeah. you're kind of, you're kind of. Um, seven trillion for what? Seven. The total market cap. Total market cap. That's seven low. Trillion. That's. Well, I know. It still feels conservative. Let's fight about it. That is low. I'm going to show you guys some data that actually backs up what you're saying right now. But before we move on, we have to get this one last thing out of the way. Okay. We have to get. Um, the Giants quarterback, third, uh, third string undrafted, I believe, quarterback, Tommy DeVito, mm. Paisan of the pigskin, <laughs> yeah, is true. winning games for the Giants, which we didn't think was physically possible. But his manager showed up on Monday Night Football. This is his man. Tommy's in blue, getting ready for the game. Yeah, this is his manager. Man. Okay. We don't need sound for this. This is his manager. The guy's a consigli. He looks like a consigliere in the mob. Mm-hmm. He's got a pinstripe suit on. He's glad handing. He's fist bumping. He's That's hugging. A nice hat. He yeah. has a, a bag of some sorts. Are mm-hmm. there cutlets in there? Is there gabagool? Mm. I don't know. The internet is on fire with this man. <laughs> His name is Sean Stellato. Look at this. Stilato. Look at this dude. Uh-huh. That he guy. On the phone. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's on the phone. Oh, he's got God. the rings. He's got the bracelets. He's like Tommy. Baby, look, you oh have got God. nothing to worry about. I've got Baby. you set up. I've got a house in the Bronx. I've got a place where you can go down quietly, right, in the Hamptons. <laughs> and if you want to get out of here, we can go down to Florida. I got an old lady down there. She'll take care of you. Right? Hey, you need me to break Daniel Jones' leg? I got you. Oh my God. Look, Daniel the Jones, he's not happening anymore. <laughs> Saquon, you are the future of this franchise. You are the future. Saquon <laughs> said he's going to leave. I'm going to make him an offer. He cannot refuse. Tommy, <laughs> it's fine. This guy's incredible. He's hard to do. Yeah, How deals him. are made right oh, here. I, I love it. Tommy yeah. DeVito. Tommy DeVito wow. and Sean Stellato. Good God. These guys, <laughs> these guys are putting concrete blocks on shoes, on feet. Yeah. How about uh, the storylines, though? I know you I want to do it. this. The storylines of the NFL this year. You got Taylor Amazing. Swift raising the, the, the viewership. There's yeah. a kiss of death. She's the kiss of death for the Chiefs. Yeah, well, recently she has been, yeah, for sure. But you have, you have her, all of her stuff going on, of course. Then you have the Tommy DeVito. There's yeah. there's some other things going on in the NFL. It's just like, there's like, I feel like this is the first time in a long time some of the most entertaining things about the NFL have nothing to do with the sport of football. Oh, 100,000%. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Alex mm. Earl is like the number one TikTok star mm-hmm. in the world. Like for the past like two years, she's dating a guy in the NFL, like Braxton. Mm. I don't even oh, know his see, name. Couldn't tell you. We don't you. know his name, so I don't that's, know that's his an full L. Full name, but that's he's he is in the NFL, and they call him NFL man. Like they, the NFL has gotten so much exposure from TikTok and Taylor Swift this season. Yeah. It's yeah. insane. Yeah. It's, crazy. it's crazy. It is pretty crazy. Um, yeah, as a fifty uh, percent Italian, my grandfather owned a concrete block plant in oh, um, nice. South Philly. Okay, and yeah, so let's just say when uh, there were family get-togethers, 
on the Demandi side, St uh, Sean was there. <laughs> what? Oh my Sean and his people. Sean's people. Sean had representatives there. But guys, oh we're going to get into the main story of today, which is kind of the meme here in crypto that the dollar is going to zero. Mm. And to that, I would say it's impossible. Because just like Bitcoin, one Bitcoin equals one Bitcoin, and one dollar will always equal one dollar. So the big, the dollar is not going to go to zero because in, unlike Bitcoin, which Bitcoin is backed by math and um, hash rate, the dollar is backed by the full faith and credit of the United States, which in turn is backed by war. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. as long as America can do the war, it can keep the dollar as the world reserve currency. So we need to divorce our minds from thinking that the dollar is going to zero because the dollar will always be one dollar. Now, yeah. its purchasing power and its value as a currency is losing, it is losing that by the minute. And that is what is going to go to zero. But the dollar will always be around as long as there is a world reserve currency that is run by the United States. That is some important context to keep in mind when you're looking at the 30,000 foot view of your finances. And in that 30,000 foot view, you need to be familiar with this website, which is, and we will put it in the chat, WTF happened in 1971. Mm -hmm. This is your guide after you read the Bitcoin white paper. This is your guide for how you should approach and think about money. Okay? So WTF happened in 1971. There are many charts and graphs here. But what happened in 1971 was what, Drew? Uh, Nixon pulling us off the gold standard with a very short and abbreviated speech that was yes. not understood by vast majority of the population was released. Essentially, the French wanted to get their gold out of the holdings of the United States. And uh, the United States said, nah, turn the ships around. We're pulling off the gold standard. And uh, just trust us. We got you, boo. And then that and here we are. Things kind of got crazy since then. And this was a linchpin that had been almost a century in the making. And we're going to get into that in a minute. But I just want to do a quick cursory overlook of what happened in 1971. This is the first graph. Uh, growth in productivity versus hourly compensation since 1948. You see them going up kind of linearly tracking. And then in 1971, they begin to bifurcate. Compensation has only increased 115%, whereas productivity has increased 246%. It was like a line. It was just going up hand yeah. in hand. More real GDP wages and trade policies in the U.S. since 1947. Everything's kind of tracking one to one. 1971 is right here. And the bifurcation starts. Real median weekly earnings flatlined mm. and actually have regressed in relation to GDP, which has gone up immensely. Yeah. We're just gonna we're gonna move. There's so much stuff here going on. It's insane. Uh, this is an interesting look. Average black income as a percent of average white income up until 1971. So apparently, all of these racists were allowing black people to ascend up the social ladder until 1971, to where there's basically been no progress at all. Yeah. Continuing further, we're, we're there's. I mean, I could scroll on this website. It's look at mix. this. Look <laughs> at this. It all points. To 1971. Okay. Um, where was another really good one? Market capitalization by sector, net savings as a percent of gross national income. Mm -hmm. 1970, right here. It has its ups and downs, but it always stays as, you know, between 10% of the gross national income. It dips down in the 70s. 1971 <laughs> has a spike. And from there, it's been all the way down. This stops at, I believe, 2019 or 2020. Um, but if it's back down here, it's actually at its lowest. Yeah. Ever. A lot of these don't include what just happened. You yeah. know what I mean? Many like, of them don't. Yeah. You guys, did you post the link in there? Okay, great. Um, you guys need to be familiar with this. This is incredibly important for your education and your mindset when it comes to oh, everything. This is, let's stop here. This is a great one. Okay. <laughs> yeah. The cost of a barrel of oil in nominal terms. You notice it broke below the zero line. It and did. what the yeah. PSYOP was is that our dollar was backed by oil. And they kind of backed off that PSYOP since this moment happened. 
This is in 2020. We're yeah. seeing a jackknife of our GDP ratio compared to interest levels and amount due hit levels that hasn't been hit since the Civil War, yeah. which is why I think that the largest print this country has ever seen is coming, and the largest one we've ever had just happened. It's yeah. going to get absolutely bananas. They're going to have to do what a dog would do in its last gasps of air and life is yeah. it's cornered and realizing that everything's done. It's, so, Owen, I'm going to mm, switch back and forth damn. between my notes. The The less you can show my notes, the better, just because they're not going to make sense to many people. But... Mm. Um, all of this stuff about the dollar going to zero, all of this stuff about how our economy has fundamentally changed over from a value economy to a debt economy. 1971 was the, uh, the crescendo yeah. of a thing that started n about a hundred years earlier in 1888. Okay. All of this happened because a typesetter from Pennsylvania went to Switzerland in 1888 and that Turd's name was James W. Sullivan. He started what is known as the progressive movement in the United States, which for the educated is essentially just a socialist movement. Mm. He went to Switzerland. He learned a bunch about socialism. He studied Marxism. He brought it back to the United States. He wrote a book that went wild in academic circles, and he introduced socialism to the United States in 1888. And this was the perfect timing for the progressives to take hold and start putting in drip by drip policies that benefited the socialists because there had been a disruption just recently in the civil war 20 years earlier mm -hmm. and it was boiling getting ready to boil over again in world war one mm -hmm. because let me remind everyone here that there was no income tax mandated by the government for a while for the most of the United States history, it would right. come and go in blips like around the Civil War and a little bit before then, right. but there was no income tax. But the, the coup de grace for the socialists who take over this country, which they did in 1913 with the passing of the 16th Amendment. Mm. The 16th Amendment is what kicked off and introduced the income tax in the United States, and they sold it as this little thing. Okay. Do, right? They said, hey guys, don't worry. Let me see where they're, we're on the right notes are. It's not that gonna be that big of a deal, okay? Or what yeah. Uh da 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 da, da. See, they said it's not that big of a deal. It's only gonna be a little bit, okay? Is this transitory? Yeah. Okay. We're just gonna do a tiny little bit. Where was it? Yeah. Just a touch. Supports the income tax sold as a tax that would only target the rich, right? Tax the rich. Yeah. But as history has shown, the government encroachment have a tendency of growing over time. In 1970s, in the lowest tax bracket was 2%, although the highest income earners saw their taxes skyrocket to 67%. Little story there, that tax bracket was only for the Rockefellers. <laughs> 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 they literally made a tax bracket to target oh one family. <laughs> so they said, hey guys, it's not going to be that big of a deal. No one's going to have to do it. If you look here, here is a, um, this is the first ever 1040 form. Mm. Uh, pretty simple. <laughs> Not much to it. This is from 1914. Okay. Okay. Right so, after the... The year bank. after. Yeah. The year after. Okay. 1914. Uh, you know what happened the year after the 16th Amendment was passed? What's that? Drew? What's that? The Fed was created. Oh, yeah. Because they passed it in 1913, then 14. Yeah. I thought the Fed... Uh, I thought it was 13, but... No, they, they met in 13. They, they actually created thinking. the that's... Federal Reserve, which is a private bank. It is a cent private central bank. Okay. Yeah. It is not... It is a quasi-governmental entity and does not have any um, representation power. There's no, you can't vote members of the Fed in or out, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. They're all represented by other banks. It is a central, private central bank that controls the U.S. Yeah. government. The bankers took over the U.S. government in 1914. And you know what else started in 1914? Uh, well, I mean, on what you just said, there was it. There was a big push that kind of pushed J.P. Morgan over the edge of yeah. wanting to make this happen. Yeah, the mm -hmm. the financial crisis in 1890 or 1895 mm -hmm. up to 1907 was mm -hmm. all on the shoulders of J.P. Morgan. Mm -hmm. So they they were tired of being out in the public eye, being the one that the the public can focus all their dissent about. Too, uh, you know, in this very centralized manner, J.P. Morgan, uh, I think it's John Pierre Morgan or something like that, yep. um, just got out of limelight, pushed the Federal Reserve forward, 
Thankfully, his adversaries to the creation of the Federal Reserve were on the Titanic and it yeah. went down. Yeah, you know what happened soon after the Federal uh, Reserve was created? And by soon, I mean basically the same the same year. Yeah. Um, World War One. Yep. Because when you need to change a financial yep. system, you have to start a war. A big okay? war. A big war. And oh, that's no. what they did. And that's <laughs> oh, exactly no. what they did. That's so not good. Here we go. Here we go, folks. In 1914, that is when World War I started. And it was off to the races for debt slavery. That was the new system that was put in place. If you go back to WTF 1970, 1971, you can see most of these things are fine. Um, working hours to buy S&P 500. No, I don't want that one. Uh, bank assets. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's bullish. This is really bullish. We had started the journey to debt slavery in 1914, but it really didn't. It would take another basically 60 years to kick off in 1971. Mm -hmm. I will continue. Take down my screen so I can look at my notes. Thanks, mm -hmm. bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'll continue to take down my screen <laughs> to look at my notes. Yeah. This is like I will the not be stopped. This is like history teacher that I always needed. There you go. Like the history lesson. Like, just be real with me. I know. Just be real. This is it. This <laughs> is the stuff real. they will not teach you in schools. It's true. Um, which is, it's, it's true. funny because you normally governments tax things that they don't want their public to do or they'll do tariffs so they're it, it's pun tax is punitive it's there to impede the thing that is being taxed okay tariffs you, know, you have tariffs in order to equalize trade and like basically punish other countries from bringing cheap trade uh to your country they'll tax things like cigarettes um you see they they pushed they held off on trying to ban menthols though yeah i know they could feel the 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 war coming yeah That's all those carnies all oh, those man. carnies would rise up. Oh, yeah. And you yeah. can't stop a carny when they're out of smokes. <laughs> when they're out of smokes, yeah. It's over with. Yeah, those Teamsters, they, they're, they're, they're going to puff them menthols. Yeah. And if they can't get them, the whole country stops. Mm -hmm. Anyways, you tax things that you don't want people to do. So taxing income makes no sense unless you don't want people to what? Whoa. Have income. Whoa. If you, if you need a uh, permanent underclass of people that are constantly looking to the government for a bailout, then what do you what do you need to do is you need to tax their income because mm. let's just be perfectly legit here the higher income tax bracket people the higher earners they have the accountants in place to manipulate and use the tax system to their advantage so they're not they're not paying the taxes it's all coming from other things cut to the beginning of world war one uh, we need a we need a monetary reset. Let's see where are my charts here. Ah, oh, this is a beautiful website. Timeline: 150 years of U.S. Oh, national debt. I like debt. this one. This is a good vision. This is great. Yeah. So we're here. Oops. Here we are. 1915. World War One starts in 1914. Okay, GDP. This is percent of GDP is the debt. 3.5 percent. But the bankers they can't do with having everyone have access to a capitalist society. They need to manipulate it. So they start the Fed, they start manipulating currency, and then it shoots up. This is what happens during war, okay? Mm. Your, your debt goes up because war is very, very expensive. It mm -hmm. destroys capital. Mm. So that goes up, and we kind of seesaw back down. Then we go through the Great Depression, and we swing back up. And then we do a thing that had never happened before, is we hit, uh, at the end of World War II, we hit uh, the GDP. The debt was more than the GDP of the United States. Oh my gosh, that sounds just terrible. Uh, and what happened now. around this time? Let me see. Where was that graph? Ah, dang it. I didn't pull it up. Got Anyways, you know what happened, Drew. What happened around this time? What was the agreement? Bretton Woods. Bretton Woods. Bretton Woods. That's what I'm saying. The Bretton Woods 2.0. It's about when, man. It's yeah. not about if. It's when. Like, so everyone was like freaking out. Hey, man, we're in a lot of debt. And we there's literally not enough gold to go around now because all of Europe has been deleted. And Asia is still in the dark ages. So we need a new monetary system. So they make Bretton Woods. They decide to take to slowly wean us off of the gold standard. Um, and from there, debt goes down. But it doesn't go down that much. Interesting. So here, yeah. it's basically like a nothing burger. Yeah. And then here, it, we continue to stay in the double digits all the way up uh, through the 70s. And you'll see, even in 1971, see, when we came off... Let's yep. stay right here on the 70s, right? So, 
Macroeconomically, a lot of people are using the graph of interest rates and how hard the Federal Reserve's had to act in keeping inflation down to compare the 1970s to 80s problem of that gas inflation crisis of yep. the 1970s yep. to 80s that ended up with 18% home mortgages. This shows how little of a GDP problem that actually was. Yeah. I know. Let's keep going. I just Let's wanted to make going. a yeah. note about that. So here in 1971, the, the bankers see that they're in a problem that is untenable and they've got to break the back. They have to go full fiat currency because they need the capital. They need the volume. They need the hot ball of money to mm. take form and start passing that hot ball of money back and forth. And that's exactly what they do in 1971. And you'll see in 1971, things uh, after we get the crash of the 80s, okay, mm -hmm. things only start going up, okay? Up in the 90s, we're at 44%, uh, 47% of GDP. Come back down to 2001, what happened then? Yeah, 9-11. Oh, yeah. yep. They're figuring out, hey, we need, to, we need to kick this can back up. Yep. And now we go on what appears to be a hockey stick to hell. Going Look up and up and up in 20. <laughs> this, is, this is, okay, so we kind of flatlined here, but it's about yeah. to get kicked off. I think it's going to get kicked off here where we really see debt start to skyrocket because we can't stop printing and this is where we get the meme of the dollar the value of the dollar going to zero because yeah. remember a dollar will always be a dollar stop thinking about your bitcoin in relation to dollars okay mm -hmm. think about your bitcoin in relation to value or houses how many houses can you get right here dollar? people are like oh, you know when bitcoin hits a million dollars i don't care about that because in 2030 a loaf of bread yeah. may cost 500 bucks. Yeah. And your million dollar Bitcoin doesn't mean shit. Well, okay? that's the whole thing that it pisses Damn me off about it. the XRP narrative, right? Like, mm -hmm. you think an XRP is going to be worth $589 a piece? Is your, Who cares? Your bread's going to be your whole bag then, bro. Yeah. It's going to be 20 grand. Well, whatever, I, you know? what's even worse about this is I, I've seen people in the community, uh, in the investing bros community, but also like around the space. What good is it? What good is it if you we see these prices in crypto and crypto goes up mm -hmm. if you can't pay your bills right. and you have to liquidate all of your crypto to pay your bills? Right. What good is it to watch the price of Bitcoin shoot up to a million dollars all the while you're still in massive amounts of debt mm -hmm. and you can't pay off anything? That's not good either. Like that that is a broken system. And again, I've, I literally have friends in the crypto space who've literally had to take a mental break from crypto yeah. because it is painful to watch and they know with their mind this is the best time to be investing and right. they cannot. Yes. They're still really? in the hole. They uh, do not have a yes. single dollar to put into crypto because of the, the screwed up system. The system is shaking them out like, uh, you know, the, 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 the pain that you're explaining is so, so real with many, many people right now. And like, mm -hmm. if we're not super focused on, you know, what different projects are coming out or what narratives have shifted or whatever's happened in the crypto realm, like day to day, yeah. that's where we start missing out and we start, you know, losing <laughs> out on um, yeah. actually... Because like I've I've said I'd be screwed. I mm -hmm. wouldn't be able. I I would have. You know. I I would probably figure it out. I'd you know. I'd probably start a construction business or something. But if I didn't have crypto, like man, I it would be really really hard to raise a family yep. right now. It so, would be. Ex yeah. I mean, and it is extremely hard to raise a family yeah. on a single income. That's by design, okay? Because part of the there's so many other things here. Uh, let me see if I can pull up the graph about uh, women in the workforce. Um. Stick with me here, Hannah. Okay. Don't worry. No. It's, it's not going the way you think. Uh, where is it? Maybe, maybe it is. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, here's the CPI. Look at this. Maybe we should find out what Hannah's thinking. As a man, I have to mansplain what, man, what Hannah's thinking. Right, man. Mansplain. Oh my God. Um, look at this. The CPI is just like, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> we've, all, we've all accidentally scrolled past that video. Yep. Um, cumulative inflation. We're at um two thousand percent. No big. Deal. That was in twenty fifteen. God, gracious. what is it now? Um, there's it's about single. Ah, here we go. America has become a nation of dual income working couples. This stresses out. I mean, yeah. God, but in that's like in nineteen sixty five. Forty seven percent of households had mm. both spouses working. Now it's sixty six percent. Husband yeah. only went from thirty-eight to twenty-one percent. Now, let me sh let me let me ask let me ask you something. Look at Papa ask Goose. When you when you take a supply of labor, okay, that is being paid a certain amount of money, 
And then you essentially double the supply of labor. What happens to the value of that labor? If you double the supply, the value is cut in half. Uh -huh. So this is the PSYOP. I'm not saying women should not be in the workforce or be educated or vote or any of that dumb shit that you're going to say. The in value the of labor is gone. I'm saying having more workers in the workforce drives wages down. Uh-huh. And you can and tax is, twice as many people. And you can tax twice as many people. Uh -huh. And you have these... Now you have not just men working for soul-crushing corporations yeah. that are not capitalistic and are being fed by the government. You have women. Well, so both let's, do, let's, do, and, let's and, do one better, Nick. Guess what that also means? Neither parent... Women. Neither, oh, sorry. Neither parent... <laughs> goodness gracious. Neither parent is at home, so where are those kids going? Dude, they're, they're going, going, to, school. going to school. To be educated by the progressives yes. who... P.S. The progressives started the public education system it because they knew that they needed socialism to be yep. inculcated at yeah. an early stage. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This yeah. is, this is all part of the plan to create a permanent subservient class to the elites. It's having working this, is the worst this part. Is working. Man. My wife, my it wife and I have been having these exact conversations at home. She's like, my wife is the one like waking up that she's like, she was like, she, by the way, I think any woman who wants to work, work, but to have the ability and right to stay home with your kids is still a precious thing for any mom to be able to do. It's weird that and it's she's like, she's realizing it's being stripped away from her. Like yeah. she, at this sad. point, she's working. My, I still have a goal. I'm going to grind, and crypto's going to be a part of that. I'm going to grind to get to where I can provide, and she can stay home with our kids. But at the moment, that is a borderline impossible task to happen. Well, and it's funny because I was mm. I was listening to this um, feminist actually. I was listening to her YouTube video, and she said the whole idea of um, a woman not working at home and literally just being this like 1960s Stepford wife where all she does is like, she takes care of the kids. And when the kids are at school, she goes, and she does shopping and blah, blah, blah. It was like, that didn't exist for all of humanity up until the fifties because the woman at home, like the woman at home was making a business function. She was milking the cow. She was slaughtering the coyotes. A lot of work. She was making the cheese. She was yeah. doing everything to keep the whole system going. She was an incredibly industrious yeah. and crucial part of society. And you trade that. You had this nice little like golden era in the 60s where you could just kind of sit at home and do whatever. And now Shannon has to wake up at 8 a.m., go to her soulless corporate job. She gets told she gets a 15-minute break and can come home and consume Netflix and soil seed oils and do the whole thing again. Yeah. What a trade-off. It's actually... I can speak on that because... Please, Hannah. I feel yeah. like I'm talking out of turn here. Like, I, I, am I full of shit right now? No. No, you're just I saying mean, the stuff, man. I wanted Matt McGates. I recommend... No, Hannah's talking. Yeah, yeah. Let, let, yeah. let the, let oh, the no, Hannah talk. Read it. Yeah. Double H has got to preach. Yeah, you oh, do. Oh, yeah, it. we'll go there next. I was just, I was just going to say, like, I I was younger. I'm 22 now, but, like, when I was, like, 15, 16, that's when, like, the feminist narrative was, like, really being pushed everywhere. I mean... Probably before then, but that when I was that age, it was like, yeah. like girls, girl power, like girl boss, girl start boss, your yeah. own business, like do this. And boss I was bitch. always like, I want to be the breadwinner. Like girls should be doing, girls should definitely be worried. Like I was always like following the feminist narrative because I didn't know any better. But now I'm like 22 and like thinking about planning for kids. And I'm like, it would be a dream to be able to stay home with them. But now it's like very difficult to do and it's not a lot of people are doing that and it like now my my mindset i i still want to work i have goals like i want a career yeah. but yeah. also i think like i don't i kind of want to homeschool my kids like i'm for sure i i want to <laughs> yeah. i also yeah. like I, I i don't know i don't know what i'm going to do in the future but but now like it would be a absolute like blessing to be able to raise your kids the way that you want to and to be yeah. able to build like just to actually put your own ideologies into their yeah. head instead of other people. And yeah, I don't know. I, I, my mindset has shifted a lot over the past, like two years, three years yeah. for and sure. From and what I'm, it, it was being pushed. Like, it, yeah. like when I was in high school, when I was in college, like it's pushed like the, the yeah. feminism narrative, it's mm -hmm. obvious, obviously, but yeah, they're, we could do a whole show on feminism. There are three waves of feminism. There's first, second, and third. We're now in the third. The third is the most toxic. Mm. Second is second is fine. It's it's I have problems with it. First wave is ethical and right and moral. It's like yeah. women should be able to have property and vote and all that other stuff. Which mm -hmm. P.S. for most of human history they did. There's a reason like in ancient times where most of their like uh, um, items of worship and items of veneration were women. <laughs> Yeah. Like if you, if you go to like an ancient history museum, it's <laughs> right. like it's like thick ass Latinas with giant <laughs> booties. 
all everywhere. They're all little statuettes, okay? Because they all venerated women, okay? That's the history. They, they knew. Yeah, you go to the ancient history, thick, okay? It looks like a ludicrous music video, yeah. okay? It's crazy. <laughs> And the value yeah, of what a woman is. does is so yeah. undervalued. I just said it. I said like, it. Like, being a mom and, like, growing good humans with good moral compasses and creating good parts of society that will expand like that is the most important thing on the planet, man. Yeah. And, like, you yeah. know, the whole job of me as a man is just to, like, go around and forage money and as much yeah. goods and resources for her to use as possible. That's the whole goal. I well, and like. the, now you're, you're getting to the unlocking of the massive problem with humanity as a whole. Mm. Everything recently Whoa. has been about you take care of yourself, right. love yourself, right. pay, provide for yourself, be happy. Who makes you happy? If this woman or man makes you happy, go for it up until oh. they don't make you happy and then leave them and split up. And then, so you have this, so self-focused thing happening the kids are the future kids yeah, are yeah. The, your job as a parent if you're a man or a woman whether you are a breadwinner or whether you stay home and, and i've seen families where the woman is the breadwinner and the man mm -hmm. stays home mm -hmm. you know what whatever floats your boat if that works that works but your do job woman, is to your job is to build the future <laughs> your job is to prepare your children the future civilization yeah. to be successful it's not about you then like right. that's the other thing is yeah, people need to realize crazy. happiness, real happiness actually comes when you stop thinking about yourself. Oh, yeah. The happiest people in the world percent. are just Preacher. constantly worried about do, other do, people. Do the little horn button. Ba, 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 ba. Yeah, there we go. That's, that's but, but that's another thing that's not just the feminist agenda. It's, it's a, a lot of this stuff has been, hey, how do we ruin humanity? Let's get everyone just to think about themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's... Well, it's yeah. dating culture it's like oh Lord, it's, don't even get it's me started the music industry it's the media yeah. it's media it's yeah. everywhere but they're literally promoting reasons to not have kids reasons to be the dilfs or the to be yeah. single turn into Japan. and how I'm to make dilf. yourself happy and get rich and and chase all of these yeah. these um, <laughs> consumerism consumerism it is. Chase it's just material like, items yeah. and chase fun stuff and yeah. drugs yeah. and and be powerful wait, and whatever but yeah. then your fertility runs out yeah. and then you don't have anything to live for other than yourself and, and more consumerism you're not gonna be happy you're gonna go seek depression pills you because who benefits, from big pharma who benefits from the consumerism match massive corporations with consolidating the wealth all right there you go ding 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 have babies boys and girls yes. ladies and gentlemen members of the chat that is the thrust of the issue. Yeah. It is a it is a society of consumerism that has been foisted on us especially since mm -hmm. 1971. Consume consume consume. Mm -hmm. Do not be invested in your local community. Do not create more of yourself and do not be invested in any type of spiritual community. You must be bifurcated and atomized so you can be controlled, okay? You need to swipe left, you need to swipe right, you need to chat, you need to tweet, you need to do this, you need to go to work in your bubble and move and uh adhere to corporate culture and not make your own well that's the that danger the form of people of control. realizing crypto right like yes. they see like it it, it changes crypto is you. the reddest pill it's the reddest pill like you realize that like i don't need to sit here and suffer in your system that's built here i can digitally plug my value into external systems that are worldwide i can find uh you know different projects that are aggressive i can actually change my life without having to leave my money in a sure loss in my bank like you know that's just the way that i've been kind of turned into thinking after and it all happened yep. you know obviously <clears throat> i was a gold bug before crypto i've been watching this debt bubble yep. deal for a while and prepping for it but bitcoin is the you know calmest most peaceful way that i can protest my descent and exercise some capital flight at the same time it is fluffy the sheep hits the nail on the head reduce consumerism will reduce environmental impact hey and by and large i do not go along with the green agenda but Man, oh man! When you stop buying dumb shit, yeah, you yeah. don't cons you you're not putting dumb shit into the environment. <laughs> right. it's, it's kind of amazing. If there's no demand, yeah, stop and it, like man, don't even get me started on regenerative farming. I got to move on, guys. Oh, look dude. at this graph. Uh, okay. Look also, at this graph. Fine. I'm sorry, Hannah. Go ahead, what preach. When we buy things, correct me if I'm wrong, but when we buy things that are manufactured in China, we're taking U.S. dollars that are in our economy and we're putting it in their economy. Hit that horn button, Owen. Hit that horn button. Yes, it is. That's exactly it. So stop buying cheap shit from other yeah. countries. Like source locally and understand the impact of your actions. Source as much as you can locally. Not that I always do that, but no. like, well, yeah. that's I, bizarre to me. The amount 
of advertising and and manufacturing and mm -hmm. importing that we do like from mm -hmm. china we're putting all of our money into their economy which yep. is not good especially right now <laughs> folks things are not supposed to be as cheap as they are right. it is um unnatural and manuf and um um fake to have cheap stuff okay it's not the way things are supposed to be you should go out of your way to buy locally i'm going to shout out origin usa these mm. guys uh co-founded by jocko willink Oh really? These guys make. Well, I love um, Jacko. Yeah. yeah, these guys make jeans and they make boots and they make all this stuff, all of it. And I'm talking about down to the rivets and the shoelaces. All of it is sourced and assembled in the United States. And yeah, mm. you will pay a little bit more for the jeans, but not that much. Okay, look, $128 for handmade American cotton. American zippers. They even like YKK is a Korean company that makes zippers. Yeah. They even source their own zippers. Okay. YKK like 128 bucks. Zippers. Okay. And if you buy two, you get it for hundred bucks a piece. You're paying that anyway. When you go to, uh, you're paying basically that much when you, uh, buy uh, jeans from old Navy because yep. the old Navy jeans will last two years. Yep. How do I know this? Because my old Navy jeans all lasted two years. These jeans, I just bought three pairs of them. They fit great. They're, they're amazing. Stretch. They have stretch. They're yeah. made for thick thighs and thick calves. I'm getting thick. For thick ass people. I'm getting thick. All right. <laughs> Buy them from Origin. This isn't sponsored. They don't give a shit about us, but this is an example well, we of how you can break the system. Them. We give a shit about them. That's right. And I wear them on my ass. Uh, the rise and fall of the dollar. Look at this chart. This is the spending power of $100. In 1913, great. $100 would buy you $100 worth of stuff, which back then was a shitload of stuff. Some people would only. Make a hundred dollars every few months. Right. Okay. I think a car in 1913. Um, I think a Model was T was one thousand yeah, dollars or something like it that. Was something stupid. Hundred dollars bought you a lot of stuff, and now a hundred dollars basically has the purchasing power today of three dollars and fifty seven cents. Well, this is the problem of leaving your money in those retirement accounts and expecting them and the traditional markets to keep up with the external environment that is happening behind yeah. the scenes. This is that external environment happening behind the scenes that macroeconomists refuse to bring up in their oh, headline inflation this year is just getting a little bit better. So we're looking a lot better, yep. guys. They are leaving this entire landscape out of that conversation yep. because it shows that they're scamming you. You know, yep. like it's a flat scam. So it's a flat scam. That's, um, that's my sermon for today. I didn't even get into the rest of the stuff that I wanted to get into, but we got some time. I, what I, else you got? Well, we got two minutes. I, I hope this was educational. If you guys like this kind of stuff, hit the like button. $600 in 1913 for a uh -oh. Model T 19. $600. See? Uh oh. The yeah. results are in. AVAX and Tia. Ooh, I think I may oh. do a 50 50 split then. Well, no, AVAX won. You've been an AVAX maxi. I know. I've already got so much AVAX. If I buy $20,000 worth of AVAX, someone's going to call me on the phone and be like, well, sir, how can we help you? Um,. <laughs> Adjusted price for inflation, 1913 touring car price, uh, $600, would be equivalent to $14,000. Yeah. So even that right there, C90, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a brand new car mm -hmm. for $14,000 does not exist. Yeah. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. What is the cheapest new car? I believe it's $16,000. No, right now. Toyota has that electric car, that electric truck that is like stupid cheap. It's like $10,000, but it's no, not available. You, you got to order them from Alibaba or some shit. Yeah, right? it's not available in the U.S. Oh they my God. The cheapest car is the Mitsubishi Mirage, $17,000. Is yeah. Chili Rainbow still in chat? Chili Rainbow? I don't know. I see but them around. They sent these. The testies? The, the testies. testies. Look guys, we're a little nuts but on every this day show. You test I was those. thinking when we opened it, Owen and I opened it. I hmm. thought it was what you pulled up that you were going to order from Alibaba. Oh, the geoduck, the, the gooey duck. <laughs> the geoduck. Doesn't yeah. it look like that? I can no? go get it. I can go get a geoduck from H Mart. I it's thought just... that he sent us a geoduck ornament, and I was like, "This is amazing. This is the best thing ever." But Guys, the if balls you want me are to, great too. Yeah, if you want me to bring a gooey duck, yeah, no! the veins on there. Yeah, the veins and everything. Oh this, my the, the, It's so close to my face right now. Like as a, as the, it's, it's yeah. very happy. unsettling. Yeah, <laughs> I will buy a gooey duck and I will bring it onto the show. Okay, really? a live one. Yes, they're, they're at H Mart. You can get them at H Mart. Are we doing this? I, We're doing it, guys. Are we? Are we they're doing alive, this? They're alive, right? They're alive. Yeah, I'll put it in a bag. Put it in a bag of salt water. It's alive. Yeah, dude. You gotta thump them. You gotta thump them <laughs> to bring them out. You gotta thump it. 
<laughs> I need to meet it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, Mitsubishi Mirage, which oh is, I'm going to go ahead and say, way worse than a Model T. Yeah. Like, a Model T had, like, leather seats, and it was a convertible. This has crank windows. Okay. Crank windows. God. Crank windows. They don't make them like they used to. Let's uh, let's see. Whoa, 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 let's 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 price out a Mitsubishi. Mitsubishi. I wanted a Mitsubishi Evolution when those came out. Those yeah, the Evo cars. Seven. Those best, are great one cars. of the best cars. Yeah. Vehicles. Let's see. Um, Mirage G Four from seventeen seven ninety five. Okay. I don't want to book a test drive. You Man, could not pay me to not test drive this. Laid when Honey, you're what are you thing? doing? Who is this? Isn't that someone famous? Uh, she does not know her pictures on the Why Mitsubishi are you site here? website. <laughs> Explore confidence. Know. Is this going to take me to Toyota's website? <laughs> <laughs> Got him. Well, this car sucks. It just looks like... Uh, hang on. I want to build, build in place. Here we <laughs> yeah, go. That's hideous. That's not a it's good it's car. pretty freaking bad. Okay, the ES for $17,795. Um... They, and then they sell you on the additionals. Well, we're not going to do that. Okay. So what do we get? We get a warranty. Thank God. Um, I guess we can just select the color and then that's it. <laughs> <laughs> so it comes in accountant silver. Oh Shut God. up. Oh, I um, thought it was for real. We could get it for $0. We could get it in... Um, midlife crisis. Midlife yeah. crisis red. Yep. Yeah. We could do uh, cashier white mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, for zero dollars. We could have um, DMV employee blue, uh, infrared metallic for uh, fast food worker metallic yeah. red. Well, you All of these are free, one. by the way. The gray, <laughs> the gray is um, my last car got repossessed gray, and then jet black metallic of. I'm working a um, security job and I don't care. Yeah. Black. Yeah. Do That's black. probably the Do preferable the color. Do the black. Right. I, somehow we were up at eighteen thousand dollars. What now. the? We hell? can't even. What happened? We've we've picked <laughs> zero options. <laughs> what happened? What happened? What's what the? Inter it? Yeah, nothing. They're just like, ah, now you screw it. Okay, Biodynamics. we can get we can get elephant skin gray mm. or ash cigarette ash marlboro black yeah i like that i would one. go with that we're yeah. still at eighteen thousand dollars so still the model t is still a better buy your we best can, bet's black on black do you want two hundred dollars for an armrest no oh, but what are you gonna do with your hand it'll figure it out oh all right that's <laughs> oh, wow. if an armrest is 200 bucks How's an armrest two hundred dollars and lights are three hundred? Wow! They must not care about our safety for fog lights to cost that much. Mud flaps are one hundred sixty. Flaps of plastic are one hundred sixty. Um, okay, we're at nineteen. We didn't select any <laughs> options for at nineteen thousand dollars. Uh, what the frick? Still, uh, destination, destination and a welcome package. Okay. Welcome to spending more money. Thanks. <laughs> This is fluffy, dumb. <laughs> fluffy the sheep said, "Yeah, it's still a new car. Some people never are never lucky enough to buy a new car. I don't think you should buy Dude, new cars. Yeah, uh, do don't buy new cars. News flash: do You're not lucky if you're buying a new car. They don't. are absolute ass these days. Okay, you buy basically car technology peaked in 2010, mm -hmm. and from there it's been a steady slope downward into mm -hmm. a hell of touchscreens, VVTI." And um, garbage aerodynamics. Well, and you have okay? these big-headed scientists that keep stacking systems on top of yeah. systems on top of more systems. And when one of those systems breaks, then the whole thing loses its mind. I had an Audi. Uh, it was like an A8 Quattro or some you mm -hmm. know thing like that. And it had one sensor for you know it's uh, all-wheel drive. It has basically a system where it tries to electronically sense when water's on the ground. That mm -hmm. cracked just ever so slightly. A little bit of water made it into it, and the rest of the system just loses oh, its mind. So it's uh, it's a big decline downward to continually think that we can just stack all of these inherently breakable technologies on top of each other and not expect anything to go exponentially wrong. That's just, and it, you know, when I yep. see the AI narrative rolling out and it's going to take over our minds and our brains and all mm -hmm. our jobs, like they don't even have good Wi-Fi yet, bro. They haven't no. solved male pattern baldness. Well, They're not going to be rolling out an AI future <clears throat> in the next 10 yeah. years. You we know? still have phones that are turning our kids to unaliving themselves. You can't figure that out oh yet. Oh my God. So. That's on purpose. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Well, that's, that's a whole nother 
That's a whole nother episode of... Uh, that is another thing. When I was 12 years old, I had no business being on Tumblr and seeing like all these posts about suicide. What are they doing to kids? Monitor your kids' phones. Yeah. Don't yeah. give your kids phones. I Don't mean, give them a phone. Definitely a- not early. I had a phone way too early. Yeah. I think that I learned from it. And now I'm here because of it. <laughs> but like, them. I should not have been reading what I was reading. Like, You give this girl ha- a whole... I'm gonna start spilling the truth. She's okay. preaching now, guys. This is 10% <laughs> you can alcohol. You your kids' phones. <laughs> Take that shit away. Anyway, it's 100 pounds. This is 10% alcohol. This show's about to get lit. Look at this last graph, though. If you want to look at all the funny money that the banks needed to put into the system, mm. this is in trillions of dollars. Oh, it's no big deal. For the options market, space, we'll just yeah. call them derivatives, right? All of them. In 1998, there was like $100 trillion worth of fake money. In the system. Now, <clears throat> uh, this stopped in 12. I know it is well over this. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. All the swaps OTC. This is what they, this was the end goal. They God, needed a bunch of fake money. Mean? They needed, this is the hot ball of money. Dude, we need the updated version of this because mm-hmm. I don't, I think you're <clears throat> underestimating. I saw the recent estimates coming yeah. in at around 2.2 quadrillion dollars yeah. worth of derivatives quadrillion yep you know like this what you're showing the mm-hmm. updated data might actually get close to doubling what we're looking at right I now i would not be surprised at yeah. all but yes please tell us elizabeth warren how crypto is the problem yeah all this otc stuff by the way over the counter not tracked okay this is all basically people doing deals over the phone all right so yeah, trillions and trillions of dollars being swapped over the over the phone, over the counter, off the market, and yet and yet somehow a couple billion dollars worth of Bitcoin that's all tracked on a public ledger blockchain that's is the danger. is the magic bullet to solving all the world's problems. Mm-hmm. Not buying it. No one here in the chat is buying it. This has been a pretty great show. Thank you all for the interactions. Shake and make dusto. Blue punk rocker. Fluffy the sheep. Crimson caravan company. Menage a fourth. C ninety FTW. Nicole. Papa Goose, Ian Diaz, Chase and Dana for the uh, $2 super chat. Thank you so very much. Chat Half out. an ETH into one coin for better gains ideas. Chainlink. Chainlink. Oh, we need one, likes. More likes. Guys, we need one more like. Guys, we need one more like. One more like. Fluffy the Sheep. Um, who else? I got to answer Ian. Answer If him. you have 250,000 DAG, dude, you're going to do just fine. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to do just fine. Um, that's a bull market play. Obviously, you know, you're going to be up you know on the way mm-hmm. in that situation man just take out what you're originally put in you know once you hit those levels my my baseline do a triple up take your original investment out then you got two-thirds working for you in the background mm-hmm. Ooh. So, i'm go. eating my um ferrero rocher Ooh. so good Ooh. guys remember we're all just spiritual beings having a human experience be smart with your money make time for other people mm. be grateful for what you can be grateful for i'll see you at the top